on the end. Our left. Yep. Yep. Call the meeting to order. Please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Roll call, Jill. Frank Carini. Here. Mark Verhalen. Here. Kelly Ganier. Here. Mike Dudzik. Here. Darren Gabowski. Here. Jerry Crisp. Here. Cheryl Suniglia. Here. Will Martin. Here. Madeline Blood. Here. Good evening, everyone. Thank you for joining March 11th. I love the attendance. Thank you. Um, right to its consent agenda, uh, number four, A through D. Uh, if anybody has any questions or objections, it'll be approved. Anybody? I do like to congratulate Gina, obviously West Middle School promotion to principal. Gina, if you want to stand. Well then, deserved. I know she worked extremely hard, so welcome. And then we have two other uh, appointees here today, Monica Church. If Monica, if you want to stand. Monica is our new director of student services. And then Beth Kaufman. Beth, if you could stand, she is our new principal of Edgewood Elementary School. <laughs> and all those appointments will start on July 1st. Thank you, Welcome, thank ladies. You. Welcome to the team. All right, uh, the fun part of the program. <laughs> program Spotlight, Carrollton Art Program. Sarah. Hi, good evening. I'm Sarah Magania. I work at Carrollton and also Deerfield, um, but we are highlighting the art docent program tonight. Um, perfect month, though. It is uh, Youth Art Month, so thank you. I know a couple of you are judging the art show over at the high school, <laughs> um, but yeah, use, uh, Youth Art Month is the month of March, so kind of perfect timing when we're talking about art. So I have um, some previous docents and some current docents um, that are going to kind of run through the program and what it all kind of entails, okay? Um, I don't know how to do the fancy clicker thing, Blaze. <laughs> oh, okay. I kind of assigned them slides, so we'll kind of go through. Okay, so Quinn Schmidt here um, is going to kind of read through what an art docent is. Hold the microphone down. In here. What is junior art docents? Junior art docents is a group of 10 third graders, 10 fourth graders, and 10 fifth graders. Students are selected based upon a rubric, conversation with former teachers, and a scale referring to self-motivation, critical thinking, their, and their writing skills. Of course, taking into consideration is their art ability. We, um, as art teachers at all seven elementary schools, have to choose students to work with our curriculum. We are kind of only in the first group, and it's really hard. So we do have kind of a rubric system that we talk a lot with our previous teachers. We eventually do have to work with them. Students at Carrollton meet for an extra period beyond their classroom time. Students at Carrollton meet on Wednesdays or Thursdays for an additional half an hour. We use, docent, we use a docent curricul curriculum guide designed by Sarah Ozarumba. O Ozarumba <laughs> from Milwaukee Art Museum. So Sarah designed a curriculum that we can use um, on the Milwaukee Art Museum website. And us um, art teachers are able to work with them and kind of design a curriculum for the program, which is kind of slotted for year one, year two, and year so the uh, tours take place on Wednesdays and Thursdays that are going this third year of the curriculum, um, in which they study curriculum design and just kind of do a nice round of elements of art. Um, they talk about the curriculum, the resources, how to use it, and kind of wrap it 
out of the museum. awareness and understanding of the visual arts with historical and cultural context. Additionally, students expand and practice various verbal, visual, and critical thinking skills that are applied to discussing works of art. They also develop a sense of ownership and belonging to a vital cultural institution in their community, and their continued attendance to museums in the future is encouraged. Perfect. So they also get a pass each time they go um, that they can bring their entire family. So students um, plug for the museum under 12 get in free all the time, um, but adults don't. So they get a pass three times that they can take their family. Abby Coughlin. In year three, we get to select a favorite work of art from the museum's collection for further investigation create a reproduction and creative response to the selected artwork, research and develop a three to five minute presentation of the selected work of art, and deliver the presentation, artistic reproduction, and creative response to a group of peers, family, and museum staff as junior docents during the decade. So Abby's actually in fifth grade, and so she will begin her process. She's gonna speak a little bit to um, what piece she's doing, but they have to choose a that's on view. I don't know if Mike can see this, but that's his granddaughter. Um, I, I saw it. <laughs> he has two granddaughters. They're both actually our docents. That's um, Emily. <laughs> but that's Emily from last year. So she chose the Physical Art Museum by Santiago Calatrava. And so she's presenting in front of the space um, with her little watercolor rendering. And then so she has to speak for about three to five minutes show that piece of art and then kind of reinterpret it. So oftentimes students will do a poem. Um, at Deerfield, we have some awesome kids that are doing uh, songs. I can't believe it. So pretty cool. So they kind of have a couple of different things there. This is Parker Holtz. Students are responsible for selecting a piece of art from the art museum collection. Students write using the guide about their piece. They talk about the artist, history, analyze through their own interpretations, and even come up with their own alternate, alternate art form. So again, that's um, Durad from, I believe, last year. He, did that. he took a Tiffany lamp and recreated it. OK, so I have a couple of students, too, that are going to talk here. Is Ari. Ari's a former docent. Hi, my name is Ariana South, and I'm currently a student at Oak Creek East Middle School. I was in the art docent program for three years. Something I enjoyed from art docents is all the amazing pieces of art we got to see and once in fifth grade got to create. Something I learned was that art should be the way you see it and express it, like how for my project, I chose to create the painting with needles and a thread onto a pillowcase. I also really enjoyed going to the museums and seeing all the amazing pieces of artwork. So that's Ari, and she sculpted out of thread, and um, her needlework there, and then she goes to kind of interpret the painting and the thread. Lily, so Lily's talking. Art docents was always an enjoyable and is something for me to look forward to experience. It brings together interests similar people and explains the meaning and ways of art through thorough, engaging, and fascinating way. Abby here again. Hi, my name is Abby Coughlin, and I'm with you today to tell you what I like about Art Docents. Art Docents is a program where you get to learn about art's history and just history itself. It is a really cool and unique program that I love because it has given me more time, taught me about art, and has shown me I can do more art if I put my mind to it. This is my fifth grade year, so this year I'm excited. Abby's piece. It's actually made out of buttons, and the artist is, um, I think she's from New York, Tara Donovan. Um, and so Abby will make a piece with tons of plastic uh, buttons that Miss Pagania had found in the art room there. So to be continued. <laughs> and this is Bella. Bella Simonson's a former art docent. Hi, everybody. I'm Bella, and I'm a sophomore at Oak Creek High School. I was in the art docent program during 
the 2017 to 2019 school year. During my time in the program, I really enjoyed the art museum visits. I enjoyed these visits because it gave me more ideas when creating my own art, but also because it was really cool to see other people's work. I also made so many friends through the program. As you're with the same people for three years, you really get to know them and develop a special bond. I love how we all could exchange ideas amongst each other. <laughs> okay, so I have another testimonial back there, but um, another thing that Carrollton does is we um, like to make sure that we are allowed to travel to a couple of other museums and kind of branch out, so it's not just like one museum. So, we have traveled to Sheboygan in the past to visit the Sheboygan Museum, which is one of the oldest museums in the city. It's so beautiful, and they actually had just opened it up like a year ago. Um, and then this year, where did we go, Lorelai? We went to the MSOE, so we took a um, in Milwaukee, so we got to tour that and then make a small stop in Sheboygan to visit the Sheboygan Museum. Then in the past, um, we went to the Sheboygan Museum in Milwaukee to visit the Old Guard Center, which is one of the oldest museums in the city. So we visited that one with the Old Guard and then went to the Sheboygan Museum in Milwaukee. And then this year, in the same year, we uh, brought in local artists from the Old Guard to help us do a tour of the Old Guard. We actually, they created us and they designed the, um, the, uh, a farmer's market oh. and I was with Lauren so she came to talk and then she designed with my students uh, a description of the farmer's market that they could use for their own tours and then we went to that and we did that tour and then we'll do another tour of the old guard in Milwaukee and then we'll do another tour of the old guard in Milwaukee. So another thing we do too is we try to have some work around the school um, and then this is our PBIS monthly character trait so um, also I have another testimonial from Miss Magana. Oh Miss Magana the theme is responsible. Oh, okay. So how do you make a bulletin board? So I have a little bit of a story about that. Meet the person responsible for your words, actions, choices, grades, success. When you have this, Carrollton has harmony. Okay, and then I have another former testimonial from Miss Magana. Her I, sister's oh, hiding, but her yeah. sister's also a <laughs> Hi, my name is Adelina Tao, and I attend Oak Creek East Middle School. I was in the docent program when I was like in third grade. And through COVID, right? Yeah, yeah. She graduated virtually. Yeah. Um, our docent really helped me with my sto uh, storytelling skills, and it helped me express how I felt and how like I want to tell stories in a different form, in an art form that I can understand. And especially since there are a lot of different genres of, of art, there are a lot of ways to express yourself. So also the art docent program also helped me be part of the young writers program where you go to the art museum and write stories based on a piece of art that you feel connected to. So. <laughs> hey, and then questions. I'm just amazed. I mean, these students are just amazed me. I'm getting old, right? But yeah. <laughs> just the talent that our students have every day and what you guys are learning is just amazing. I just wanted to thank you. I know the board as a whole is just so yeah. proud of every one of you guys. And keep continuing. Remember, you're at Oak Creek Night, but that you have all the opportunities. And Sarah, thank you for your leadership and yeah. coach over there. I, just, I, I, have, I have one comment, too. Two years ago, I, I was chosen to be a judge at the art fair. And Sarah yeah, remembers that. that. The thank you I was it. blown away by the talent, how yeah. talented. So if you get a chance when the art fair comes up, please go. Yeah, right now. It's, it's going on this week, yeah. Yeah, yeah. please go. Yeah, because I'll be judging, you, yeah. <laughs> you, your turn, yeah. yeah. But you'll be amazed. Yeah, well, I know. Kids I've are seen some so of it talented. Yep. Yeah, yeah, so it's so all talented. seven elementaries, the two middle schools, and power, and then the high school. Yeah. yeah. So all of our different schools are getting the same amount of money to do the art fair. So the art fair this year is the best to show awards. So another cool spot right there. So thank you very much. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you for coming. Thank you for demonstrating. Good job, everybody. All right, public input, recess form report on meetings to entertain comments or questions and agenda items. If you can guys see the clock, three minutes. At two minutes and 30 seconds, I'm going to raise my hand. You got 30 seconds to cover it. If not, 
We are going to shut the mics off, and I'm going to ask you to sit down. I'm not being rude, but everybody wants to speak. I want to make sure everybody has a chance to speak to the board. Um, and then we just say, be kind. We respect your time. We respect your comments. And the same thing goes after that. Then the board will go back into a dis you know discussions. And then I just say, if you can respect that also. If not, then the conversations will be addressed. But So... <clears throat> we'll go right into it. John Mueller, if you can come up. Hi, uh, my name is John Mueller. My daughter is currently an eighth grader at Empower. My oldest son is a junior and was in the first class at Empower when it first started. My youngest son is in the sixth grade and was on the wait list at Empower but they did not have room for him, so he is now at West. A little bit about my background. Uh, I have been a VP at two uh, universities in the state of Wisconsin, both a public and a private institution, and I'm currently a higher education consultant where I advise over 40 colleges and universities across the country. During my career, I have unfortunately had to help lead colleges through difficult processes of cutting academic programs. In order to do this, they needed to um, eliminate expenses and get their budget back in, back in order. Through this experience, I've learned several important keys that are transferable to the current situation facing the district. One, academic programs should only be cut after all other expense cutting options have been studied. The community never reacts positively to academic program cuts when other cost saving options are not part of the comprehensive effort to reduce expenses while dealing with enrollment changes. Full consideration should be given to cutting administrative staff and non-academic offerings at the same time academic programs are being cut. Has the district done this and has the process been transparent? Number two, programs that are in areas of high demand or flagship offerings should not be eliminated. Do not eliminate cutting edge programs that represent where the future is going. It is more costly to rebuild these programs down the line, and it diminishes the public perception of the institution. Empower represents where education is heading, has strong program outcomes, and a wait list for entry. One example of this is the significant recognition the school has received through the success of the LEGO League teams. Empower is a program that stands out when compared to the other local districts, including Franklin. Focused attention and consideration should be given, number three, focused attention and consideration should be given to the public relations component of the decision. Cost cutting measures are rarely perceived as positive and, and coming from a position of strength. This negative perception even, uh, is even greater when academic programs are cut. I have observed many votes of no confidence, administrative firings, and board restructurings that have resulted from cutting academic programs. In addition, many colleges use high school and district rankings when making an admissions decision. I know because I've worked at colleges that do so. Eliminations of programs for high achieving students will hurt all Oak Creek students when applying to college. Number four, if a program is cut, the teach out plan must be carefully developed. The needs of those impacted put as a top priority prior to the elimination of programs. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Lizzie, in three minutes. Right. Good evening, members of the board and Superintendent Thielen. My name is Lizzie Yoder, and my daughter is a student at Empower Academy. I'm here to advocate for Empower as a personalized learning program. I want to begin by respectfully insisting that the future of Empower and the future of the district offices are two separate issues and deserve to be evaluated separately. Furthermore, the Empower Academic Program itself was never about location or about overcrowding. It was about parent demand and options for their children and understanding that one educational model does not fit all. The board wanted options, but the updated report still presents one option for Empower to shut it down this year based on some very questionable and unrelated costs. However, at Empower, students are taught critical thinking that there's always more than one option and to never give up until you have explored every possible solution. So here are some options for consideration based on concerns raised by the report. 
We heard at the last board meeting that comes down to budget and maybe even just four FTEs. So have other areas been reviewed for administrative positions that could be streamlined for FTE savings? Have efficiencies in purchasing, supplies, and facilities been considered before cutting academic programs? Have all programs been reviewed holistically for savings? Could Empower start and end times be aligned with the ninth grade center to alleviate staffing overhead? Could busing options be reviewed? Could a financial advisor be consulted to assist with budget review and recommendations? Could additional program fees be considered to help cover costs? If the current space is an issue, could Empower be moved to a different location, or could the district offices be moved to one of those locations? If the middle schools already have the room and open teacher positions, could Empower and the staff be moved to be its own house within one of them. As a last ditch option, could Empower be phased out, allowing the current students to finish the program? The purpose of a school district is to teach our children to be contributing members of society. Empower is preparing these students for tomorrow's workplace, not yesterday's or even today's. Educational models like this are teaching them how to think critically, how to adapt, and how to succeed in a business world that doesn't even exist yet. Budget concerns are a reality for every school district, but cutting successful academic programs should be the last resort. If the situation is so desperate, then where's the comprehensive plan to address this budget deficit? Why is the board being asked for funding approvals for several months running and then suddenly asked to shut down two academic programs in one month? The numbers in the report do not indicate that, M that Empower is a failure or a resource strain. Instead, it's full of estimates and guesses. And shame on whoever took the valid facility issue of the district offices and decided that the best way to address it was to sacrifice a thriving academic program in a space already designated for student use because eight years ago, the district offices didn't fit in that space, and maybe now they do. On behalf of the Empower students and their families, as well as the incoming class that has already been accepted for next year, I am insulted by the lack of due diligence given to this recommendation to close Empower, and you should be too. Thank you. Ms. Miller. Uh, Kayla Miller. I'm in three minutes. Hello, uh, my name is Kaylin. I'm currently an eighth grader at Empower Academy. In fifth grade, I vividly remember having to fill out an academic profile. In this profile, I had talked about what excited me and what scared me on my journey off to middle school. I had talked about what I had liked about school and what I had disliked about school. I, I had talked about my goals and desires for the future, but I couldn't see it actually happening. Two goals I put down, becoming better at talking to people and becoming better at math. My, go my goals closely corresponded with my fears, making friends and getting all my different types of work done on time. However, when Empower became an option, I knew that I had the ability to learn at my own pace and learning style and get more help on my struggles due to the smaller school size. And sure enough, when I had first entered in power, all my fears and limits I had placed on myself had become a thing of the past. Entering middle school, I was a shy, kept to self kid who had no plans on making friends. I struggled with subjects such as math in the past, but at Empower, I had the opportunity to find my very own learning style and work at my own pace and understanding level. Other subjects that I was strong in, I had the opportunity to get ahead at my own pace. From elementary school to middle school, my test scores have changed drastically for the better. I went from getting mostly basics to proficient and even advanced. Although even now, I still have a hard time on dif different subjects, I'm a lot farther than I ever thought I could be. Through Empower, I joined many clubs where I found, in my opinion, the best club ever, Lego League. <laughs> Through this club and the community at Empower, I got to see myself open up and finding confidence in my true self. You may wonder why me, an eighth grader, cares so much as I'm not affected by the potential closing of Empower. Well, every year since sixth grade, I get to see kids that were in the same position I was once in. I got to see them find themselves both, pers both personally and academically. I get to see their confidence grow and their ideas spark. I get to see them understand the subjects they struggled in or exceed in. I hope that more kids like me get this opportunity to grow and learn for, for themselves in their own unique way. Thank you. Mrs. Zhang. Three minutes. Okay. Uh, hello, this is Xiao Chen. 
the proud high school Chinese teacher. As you can see, I'm wearing the Oak Creek High School blue today. Uh, we heard that a compromise was offered to help Chinese to grow by stopping offering Chinese in 6th and 7th grade and keep 8th to 12th grade Chinese next year. While there is a big misunderstanding, this compromise is only sunsetting, is, will only sunset the Chinese program in two years at most, if not sooner. The entire middle school Chinese program, especially the 6th and 7th grade, is like sowing the seeds for growing a healthy plant. If we stop sowing the seeds, the plant will absolutely not grow, but will die for sure. Past experience already clearly proved this. We stopped enrolling students in the sixth and seventh grade in 2021 during the pandemic. This one year pause almost hit the Chinese program deadly, just as what you see. Our number were down across all levels in the past two years after pandemic due to stopping sowing the seeds in the sixth and seventh grade. Now we finally started to see recovery and the robust increase in middle schools, this year's high school Chinese two and next year's Chinese two and three by increasing 185%, 192% and 343%, way surpassing the past few years and even exceeding the pre-pandemic numbers. This recovery will keep unfolding in the following two years and by then our entire program will have fully recovered and even surpassed the pre-pandemic numbers. However, if we were to approve this compromise, it will not only kill the recovery, but also make our numbers further drop even more, with even lower numbers than what we see now, and the Chinese program will just die faster. So this compromise will not help to save the Chinese program, but basically to sunset it in two years. We have to continue to sow the seeds in order to help a plant to grow. The only way to save the Chinese program and let it grow is to leave the, it the way it is right now, just like German and Spanish, by giving Chinese more time two years to fully recover across all levels. Most importantly, the budget implication isn't like what the district is hoping for. Chinese program cost per student is very low, around $600 per student during the pandemic impact and around $540 per student at a regular time without the impact of the pandemic. Using the proposed financial implication, $190,000 divided by student numbers enrolled in Chinese. The financial benefit of cutting the Chinese program is unsure, even as mentioned in the April 21 proposal and already proved by the past experience during the pandemic when we had to hire extra Spanish teacher to serve the students originally signed up for Chinese. As quoted directly from the April 21 proposal to cut middle school Chinese, uh, ultimately we're unsure if they will save any FTE because the students who did take Chinese will need to take either Spanish or German, which will put pressure on class sizes in these world languages. It may end up with another foreign language teacher replacing Chinese in the middle school, which means by cutting Chinese will only will not necessarily save the budget as wished for. It may only mean spending the same or similar cost, but giving students fewer choices of languages. I'm sorry. Okay. Thank you. Ding. Three minutes. Hello. My name is Di Ying, the middle school Chinese teacher. I'd like to share some points. The benefits of cutting the Chinese program are unclear. Budget saving are unsure. After losing the Chinese teachers, we will eventually have to find someone to teach those students other languages, if not Chinese, to prepare them for college requirements at the middle school and the high school. Chinese program cost per students is very low, about 540, compared to state budget, 10,000 per person. The reason to cut Chinese regarding class size and sustainability does not hold water. Data says China, Chinese is not the only language that seems smaller class size under 18. Data says Chinese is not the only language that seems that enrollment decline. It is worth noting that the decline in Chinese numbers was directly caused by the pandemic. Students originally signed up for Chinese were forced into German and Spanish. Even though data shows German still experienced an obvious decline, and this is no obvious difference between Chinese and German in enrollment over the past, past few years. So it is really fair to treat Chinese students and German students differently under such a context. The high school Chinese, German, and Spanish program healthy and all heavily rely on the students set from the middle school Middle schools. Middle schools sow the majority of the seeds to keep our entire world language program 
big plans to survive and grow healthy. This is not just true of the Chinese program. Okay. Therefore, if any of the ch language lost the middle school seeds, the plant and the high school, as well as the entire program will, wi will wither and die for sure. Is the Chinese program really impacting our students that much? Yes. For the past seven years, even under the pandemic impact, still about uh, 1,400 students benefited from middle school Chinese program. For the coming 10 years, at least another 2,000 students will benefit. This impact will be huge and powerful. Just for the past two years, I served about 500 students. More than seven out of eight middle schools were language teachers. So the reason to cut Chinese doesn't hold water. The budget benefit of cutting Chinese is unsure and unclear. Data for this and this and next year already shows the real vitality of Chinese program compared to German and other programs. Chinese program costs per student is very low. The benefits of Chinese program and the negative impact of, of cutting Chinese program on our students and community are both obvious and tremendous. We can now simply assure what the future holds for our students, or some of them may end up for future Democrat, <laughs> diplomats, international business leader, um, influence, becoming influential figures in our country. Uh, you have to end, ma'am. You're way back. Sorry. Thank you. Abigail Barron, probably I pronounced that wrong. Apologize if I said it wrong. Three minutes. Hello, my name is Abby Baran, and I'm a seventh grader at Empower Academy. I'm standing here today to not only advocate for the current sixth and seventh graders, but to advocate for the new students that should get the opportunity to experience what this amazing school offers. There are so many opportunities that Empower offers, like passion projects. While you could argue that we could just move this to east and west, you really can't. Empower offers more hands-on learning and focus towards each individual student. I know for a fact that I would, could never have done my current passion project without the amount of support and help I received from my teacher. You just don't get that much attention from teachers at East and West because of how many kids there are there. The amount of attention that the teachers are able to give each student is the reason why we excel. Putting all of these kids into East and West will hold every single one of them back. Offer, Empower offers a unique learning environment that lets people move at their own pace and work on what they need to work on to make them excel. This leads to another reason why Empower has to stay open. Some of Empower's curriculum is on a different cycle. For example, in science, our science teachers worked hard to figure out a way to teach CBUP and units with themes instead of a whole year of each science. While it has been beneficial to, for us to be exposed to all three types with a little bit of, in a year or two we have been here, we will now have to have a gap in our learning and we can't get back until ninth grade. Closing in power doesn't just affect the students and teachers mentally and emotionally, it affects the students academically as well. You're just holding back the students. Closing in power takes away their opportunities to take high school math and language classes. You're also taking away the attention and opportunities the teachers give. They are able to help the students more and give opportunities to excel. These opportunities are not available anywhere near the level that Empower gives at East and West. Being able to collaborate with the, every grade in each class daily creates bonds and relationships between students as well. The types of relationships I have and have witnessed at Empower is another reason why Empower is amazing. Empower is a family and it makes people excited and happy to get up and go to school each day. Whether they're a teacher going in for work or a student going to learn, every single person has a connection with each other. I know that I would not be able to have the relationship I have with my teachers if I was at East and that I would not have as many fantastic friends either. I hope I was able, able to shed some light on just how important and amazing Empower and its teachers are and how much it positively affects the students. Thank you. Cody. Oh. oh, my daughter. <laughs> Evening. Three minutes, sir. I'm Cody Baran. I'm father of Abby. Um, she made some great points there. Um, and you, Mr. Dudzik, Dudzik. Dudzik. Yeah. 
Dudzik made a great point earlier about talent. Um, as you can see, my daughter is gaining more talents at Empower. Mrs. Lesniak, the math teacher, has broadened Abby's passion for math. When she was in fifth grade, she absolutely couldn't stand math. And since she's gone to Empower, she, her grades have been outstanding under Mrs. Lesniak's tutelage. Mrs. Stanchfield, her ELA teacher, has immensely improved her writing skills and got her into some writing competitions in which she's excelled. Foreign language, she mentioned, Abby mentioned. Uh, she took Spanish one at the high school as a seventh grader and got 102%. I think Empower is really more about the students. Mr. Thielen, in his information to the board, focused entirely on the money aspect of Empower, how much it costs. But what we didn't see in there was the student impact. In my line of work, if I went to my boss with an idea to change policy or procedures, and I don't offer several COAs, courses of action, he would laugh me out of his office and tell me to come back. As a leader, you have to have several options if you're gonna make a change, because you can't get cornered into one specific lane that you're gonna go. I understand facility management is important, However, in my opinion, as a father, the education of my child, my children, I also have a son who goes to Meadowview, which I hope gets to go to Empower. Education is more important than facility management, in my opinion. The $500,000 or so that it costs to run Empower is a mere chunk of the budget that you could refocus to keep Empower versus tearing it down and moving the district office to that space. So that's all I have to say. I didn't prepare anything, but I implore the board before they make a decision to explore all those avenues rather than just take one course of action at face value. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Jacob. Hi, I am Jacob Blendy, a current seventh grader at Empower Academy. I just want one singular question to ask. What has changed between May 23, 2023 and now? I know from firsthand experience as a part of the Empower Student Council that you have heard the successes of Empower Academy program. Although a lot of these decisions revolve around cost, students should come first. This, has allowed, this program has allowed me and many other aspiring students to be able to further our learning in a flexible and free way so we want to this is especially unique to the Empower community. I believe this decision could have a hugely negative impact on students of Empower Academy. Firstly, this could affect students' friendships. Sure, you could put students in the same house, but that still doesn't guarantee that people we are most comfortable with could be in any of our classes. This proposal would also split up costs, it's also split friendships so that would need to go to different middle schools. Secondly, this decision could affect personal academic goals. What would you think if a student can move further through subjects, but they can't because of things that are outside of their control? Is that unfair? Well, that situation could happen right now. At East and West Middle Schools, they only have Algebra 1, but if Empower stays open, I'll be on track to get through both Algebra and Geometry next year. Not only has Empower allowed me to be good at math, but it also has allowed me to comprehend what I'm learning in all of my subjects. It uses standard-based learning so we can target what we actually need to learn from the state. This change would also be an entirely different learning environment. We would have to adjust and learn to everything in the other middle schools, again, from using smart passes to even using the bathroom in the A to F grading scale. We would have to learn all of this when our peers have already learned and adjusted to the learning environment for one to two years. There has been, there has been also um, um, a petition that students, parents, even family members, and residents of Oak Creek has have signed that recognizes the special learning environment the school offers and that we should keep it. There are common sense solutions that the school district can, act to, can enact to help, such as um, moving the school to, to the LGIs and maybe even letting the um, students who are in Empower to go through. Please keep students in quality education first. Scott Becker. Hello, 
school board. My name is Scott Becker. My son Jason is a current seventh grade student at Empower. My daughter Melissa is a graduate for her alumni from Empower. At the last board meeting, it became clear that the real issue here is the upcoming budget deficit, and Empower is being targeted to close that gap. Also at that meeting, I believe, is Mr. Dudzik, who asked if the community has any ideas on what could be done to save Empower. I certainly do, but with only three minutes, I'm going to focus on the budget. I'm an engineer. I solve problems for a living. When my daughter was three, she told me that I have a square brain because I think outside the box. <laughs> I'm not a CPA, but I've had the privilege of serving on the Parish Finance Council at St. Rita Parish in Racine from 2012 to 2020, including three years as the chair. At that time, the school was operated and financed by the parish, so I understand some of the issues that are facing the district. We can discuss ways to chip away at the deficit. For example, over the past six months alone, September through February, the administration here has recommended and the board has approved just over $635,000 of additional spending. Some of those items include increased health benefits for secretaries, additional staff for the PAEC, and extending Oak Creek Virtual, which has dramatically declining enrollment, amongst others. Maybe, just maybe, we should hold the line on additional spending. Have we looked at any administrative inefficiencies in the district? One might ask, why does the district need to have an early education principal and assistant when the 4K programs are now operated in existing elementary schools that already have principals? Have we looked for any other inefficiencies in non-classroom facing positions? Have we considered asking schools and departments to reduce their discretionary spending? Is there any spending that could be deferred for a year? That said, what the district is really facing is a revenue problem. Trying to attack a revenue problem through reduced spending may work for a little while, but it doesn't solve the root cause of the problem. Has there been any consideration to increasing revenue either through inside the box ideas such as referendums or outside the box ideas such as selling advertising or even naming rights to our wonderful facilities like the, the stadium and the PAEC? According to the preliminary budget report, the district is looking at a $950,000 deficit on a $100 million budget. That's just under 1%. I find it really hard to believe that the district can't close this gap without closing in power. The administration reports to the board, the board reports to the voters. Voters here want in power to stay. From the sounds of the discussion at the prior meeting, the board does too. The board can tell the administration to just figure it out. At the end of May, I'm taking eight radioactive llamas to Long Beach, California for an international first Lego league competition. When we get back, there's three school days left. I hope it's not the last three days those kids have it in power. Thank you. Brenda. Brenda. Brenda, three minutes. Good evening. My name is Brenda Gowerke. I've just recognized on Friday for 20 years of service to the Oak Creek District, their students and families. Um, almost 30 years in public education. Um, I am also a military family member. My husband's been in the Guard for here in Milwaukee Refueling Wing for over 30 years, so I have a very global perspective and wanted to speak to you from that perspective tonight. Uh, first of all, I also want to acknowledge that you have a very difficult job to balance the fis fiscal responsibility to your constituents, your community, with the educational programs that you offer our students. And at the same time, as a public educator, I find it very hard to listen to talking to, now, I understand the complexity of budget and where monies come from and things like that, but to listen to millions of dollars being spent on facilities while we cut the academic offerings within those, those walls, very hard to listen to. Felt I would be remiss not stand up here and talk to you today as the German teacher about what a mistake I think it is to cut the Chinese program. Um, I think that uh, Oak Creek is a very diverse community. Our ELL staff has said we uh, have families that speak over 54 different languages in our community. And the fact that we have a world language program offerings that serve like three different areas of the world really serves our diverse community and um, is part of what I always say I'm so proud to work at Oak Creek because our school is large enough that we can offer so many different things. 
I think our three different languages that we currently offer really serve different um, areas of the world, different purposes and pathways for our students. Obviously, we hear Spanish spoken around us, and I'll even advise our students when they ask me about languages, if you're thinking about public service, like healthcare or firefighting, Spanish is probably more for you. But we heard at the last board meeting, like how many of our Oak Creek business members deal with Chinese language in their everyday work. So we know that that area of the world is important. And Chinese is the third, the world's third largest economy. German is the third world's largest economy behind the United States first and China second. And international business, German is still an important language too, and especially in that area of the world in Europe. We think um, politically and um, raising globally minded uh, voters. We know the border is an issue for our Spanish speaking world in this hemisphere. Germany is an important NATO member for us in the European hemisphere. And my husband as an Air National Guard member has talked about the ramping up of our positioning in the South Pacific due to the tensions in the South China Sea. Um, so I think it's really important all of our three languages serve the 21st century skills that our students need. And when we already have these programs and offer them, it would be a shame to cut any of them. Jessica? Three minutes. Hello, my name is Jessica Dybal. I'm a resident of Oak Creek and also a teacher at the high school for the past four years since I graduated. I teach Spanish. So as a language teacher in our district, I wanted to speak tonight in support of the Chinese program and for our world language program as a whole and all of the languages we offer. Um, so when I got my job here, I was excited to know that we offered Spanish, German, and Chinese. I spent a year studying in Europe, um, in Spain, but went to many other countries as well in an international program. Um, so in my experience, I know that all three are global languages that serve a different area of the world. Um, and I think it's awesome for our students to have the opportunity to study each of them. Um, that can set them apart when they apply to different jobs, depending on what they're going into. Um, so when I was studying, many of the international students spoke Chinese or German as their second language or third. Um, so there's, there were some of them that didn't know Spanish well yet. They would use their second language to communicate with each other. And I would also say about 40% of the students in our program spoke Chinese. Um, some as their first, some as their second. Um, so our students having access to that going beyond the USA into Europe can communicate with a lot more people. Um, for Chinese programs specifically, I have seen our students have a lot of passion for learning Chinese, really enjoy it. Um, and I've seen them work with my students in Spanish to teach each other words, compare what they're learning. Um, so I think that's a really good opportunity they have to have multiple languages. And then in my time here, from my perspective, I've seen the Chinese program grow um, with more levels being added that weren't there when I started teaching. Um, and I've also been impressed by how many students continue on to AP Chinese. It shows that the students are not only invested in starting Chinese, um, but in finishing it to become fluent so they can use it in college, use it in their jobs. Um, so students at Oak Creek have the opportunity to become multilingual Block scheduling um, also would potentially allow for students to take multiple languages and that really um, would look awesome in college and their job. Um, and so as a Spanish teacher, a language teacher, I just wanted to share to the board and the community members my support for continuing the Chinese program um, and to advocate for the unique importance and opportunities that all of the languages that we offer bring to students. Thank you. Bridget. Three minutes. My name is Bridget Coglin, and I have been an Oak Creek resident for 19 years. I'm an educator, and I have a current eighth grader at Empower, and a fifth grader who was just accepted for next year. 
I didn't plan to speak again today, but I am here after talking to many frustrated parents who do not feel comfortable speaking up or who feel their voices don't matter here. Um, I am very concerned you did not consult Empower staff regarding student needs, and your transition plan reflects a clear lack of understanding about the Empower program itself. Empower students would be split across East and West. Adding counseling and lunch bunches will not replace the fact that students will no longer have their closest friends at their school. Overall, the expectations of students are vastly different. At Empower, learning is self-paced and students move on when they master a subject area. They're not paced by a teacher. They are expected to advocate for their learning needs, such as flexible seating or extra help during the day, which is not encouraged elsewhere. Your plan also does not address the learning gaps that will occur. Current students will be held back in foreign, lang in foreign language. The seventh graders won't be able to start a new language, and those who have already had some language at the high school will now have to wait to move forward. Science and social studies curricula are cycled, so if they don't complete in power, some students will finish middle school never actually covering all of the required content. In math, students are broken up by ability, so many won't fit in a particular class if they're just dropped into another school. These will all affect future learning and testing. I know you're purely looking at numbers in your decision, but you would be closing a very successful in-demand program in our district that is really just getting started. Your reports fail to mention that Empower had to turn away more students for next year than they were able to accept. This is a program families in our district and other districts are jealous of because no one, including Franklin, has this type of program. Student, Empower students outperform our other middle schools on tests, as you can see in the graphs. I like graphs. Um, in math alone, I believe our test scores have gone up almost 20% in two years. This is the kind of data districts should want to foster, not sunset. At Empower, students learn invaluable research, communication, and organization skills that they can use in the future. The caliber of our students showed when both of our first LEGO League teams finished in the top 2% of out of over 300 teams in the state. And one of our teams, as you heard, will be representing our whole district on a national stage in June. The learning model at Empower prepares students for future success in both school and the workplace. The students will become our future thinkers and leaders. You owe it to our students, our district, and our community to do everything possible to make sure Empower continues. Thank you. Valerie? Valerie? Hello, my name is Valerie Alvarado and I am a seventh grader at Empower Academy. On January 25th, 2022, I received a letter that I had been accepted into Empower Academy. I was overjoyed. I had worked so hard to get into the program. On September 1st, 2022, I started my first day at Empower. I was a shy, socially awkward, anxious, fresh out of fifth grade middle schooler. Fifth grade had painted the picture that middle school was gonna be the scary and hard time, that we had to do this or that, or middle school would be tough. This was very overwhelming. However, when I came to Empower, it was actually quite the opposite. The teachers were so welcoming to me and were able to quickly understand how I comprehend information and taught me using concepts I could actually understand. My grades have skyrocketed because of this. I haven't always been the most attentive learner either. I remember throughout elementary school, I would struggle very badly in, top, in sub subjects and was afraid and unwilling to ask for help because I was worried what the teachers would say to me and I still would not be able to understand. Empower has changed that for me. It has opened a sense of reassurance and peace that I can ask for help without judgment and that I can advocate for myself and learning needs. Then again, my grades have been getting better because of this. Two years ago, I would have never thought that I could score proficient or even advanced subjects now seem impossible to me before. This is now possible because of, because of Empower. So many great things have happened since I came to Empower, like passion projects. They've improved my presentation skills and speech and audience skills in the past two years. I've become so much more confident in front of larger groups and I can do this because of Empower. I'm using those skills right now. Empower, <laughs> Empower has also had a great impact on my social health. When I was in elementary school, I had very few friends. I always felt invisible or unseen by teachers. When I came to Empower though, 
The teachers were so welcoming and the students, even though we had just met each other. I felt comfortable and happy. I would also like to you, for you to consider that when you're voting for Sunsetting and Power Academy and sending us to East and West Middle School to finish, not only are you sending us where the curriculums are completely different from what we are learning, so we will most likely not be on track, but you are sending us to an environment where bullying, vaping, and many other horrible things go on regularly. You really want to take us out of the safe learning environment powers created and send us to that? Honestly, I cannot imagine the amount of anxiety and frustration every one of these students at Empower might feel when they have to leave friends, teachers, the safe space made within the school, and start all over. And where are we supposed to tell the fifth graders that are, have already been sexed into Empower for next year? Sorry, you can't go anymore. How unfair is that? How are you supposed to explain to the seventh graders going into their last year of middle school that they have to start over in a new learning environment after being there for two years? That's just unlogical. And with all that to say, I would like you to think about the well-being of your students and their academic futures before making a decision on this. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, Mark Luther. <clears throat> Three minutes, sir. Good right. evening. Um, so I'd like to start off just by um, raising a few concerns about some of the numbers presented uh, during last board meeting and uh, some of the uh, talk also about the suggested approach to move forward. Uh, last meeting we saw some data that represented enrollment numbers across the different classes and different languages. The numbers were presented as an average enrollment. Um, it wasn't really mentioned anywhere that no students were enrolled for one of the years after COVID as I think one of the training teachers called out earlier, right? Um, yet it was that number was still rolled into the average and again just kind of hidden um, when you look at the Chinese teachers numbers uh, they were far more detailed a uh, lot more data presented and doesn't look anywhere near as bad I can't do it justice as well as they did so I, I won't go into much more detail on that but uh, more importantly I guess my bigger concern with all of it is um, that the data presented to us uh, was really just all about enrollment it had nothing to do uh, with the quality of the content, um, the, the benefits gained from the curriculum. Um, there is no data at all providing any, any indication in, um, as far as like the usefulness or lack thereof of the courses in the long-term perspective and where it puts our students after they leave uh, here. I would think that we would expect um, that we'd have an eye to the future uh, for what, uh, what we're having our students go through and what, how well that content will serve them after graduating, not merely whether students are just enrolling in classes. It was also mentioned that the expectation is that the Chinese teachers go out and market their classes to the students. By that approach, uh, if they're successful, we get Chinese classes. If they're not, Chinese goes away. To me, that seems like kind of an inherent flaw to put our educational future of our children and our students on how good at marketing our Chinese teachers are. That doesn't, doesn't really add up to me. Um, I guess I'll, I'll close by asking you to dig into the data that's been presented. I think that uh, make sure that the information is accurate, understand where that data comes from, any potential flaws or omissions uh, that might exist with it, and whether it's even the right data to be looking at at all. Please also keep seeking alternative solutions to resolve some of these budgetary issues. I know they're real. I know they're not going to go away. Um, I know that there's a lot out there to work with, though, as well. Um, if you don't feel like you have enough information to make a clear decision, then please get more information. Don't allow yourselves to be pushed into making a decision that you don't feel ready to make. Lastly, please consider the long-term benefit of the Chinese program. It's a distinguishing program that really sets our students apart and gives them a strategic advantage uh, as they leave and go out into the world. Thank you. Thank you. Julie Luther. Hi again, my name is Julie Luther. Two weeks ago I spoke with all of you. Two weeks ago we were all also presented with some really concerning data, some very incomplete data, as well as a very concerning faulty marketing approach up with our curriculum. Since that time I know you have all been inundated with um, emails, calls, 
requests to meet with us. There are a lot of concerned, passionate people in this district, and there are a lot of people concerned about the transparency of this proposal, the data used for it, and the plan moving ahead. And I ask you to please really pause and really think through what the motivator is. If it truly is finances, as so many people have shared, let's really look at where we're spending our money. We have a lot of really wonderful enhancements to facilities. We have the Performing Arts Center, an enhancement to the football field. We're looking at the swim program. And believe me, I get it. We have four kids between all of them. They've been in forensics, marching band, football, basketball, volleyball, wrestling track, um, cross country, lacrosse, pretty much you name it, we've got a kid in it. I get it. It's wonderful that they have these great resources and these great facilities, but not when it comes at the expense of their education. So I'm asking you to pause. Pause and be really intentional. Pause and look at the finances. Are we making the best use of the resources we have? I would say no. But others might say yes. If you really believe that we are, then look for other resources. There are so many grants out there. Why have we not explored the grant options? But to do that, it will take time. Time to investigate the grants, time to write the proposals, time to hear the decisions made on them, and time to put it in place. Additionally, I ask you to really think through the goals that we have long term for our students, really think through the data that was shared, really think through the data that was not shared, explore where we want to go as a community. I understand you may have the opportunity to vote on removing sixth and seventh grade Chinese, keeping an eighth through 12th. Please do not do that. If you do, you are basically voting to kill the program. I teach in multiple districts throughout the area, 3K through eighth grade. I promise you, if sixth and seventh graders are starting down one path in one language, the likelihood of a large majority switching at eighth grade to an unfamiliar, brand new opportunity is really, really small. So instead, I ask you to please maintain the status quo, pause, be intentional, do your homework, look at the finances, look at your long-term goals. Don't rush into a decision based on bad data that will have a long-term negative effect on our community. Our district really deserves better. Thank you. Shelly? Hi, I'm Shelly Rosenquist. Um, I grew up in Oak Creek, uh, attended the schools here, and graduated from Oak Creek High School just like 10 years ago. No, just <laughs> kidding. <laughs> um, my husband and I moved back here to raise our kids about 10 years ago, though. At the last meeting, some brave and amazing Empower students stood hip up here and shared with you their experiences in the mainstream schools and how they were bullied, beaten up physically, or blatantly ignored by their peers. I found their testimonies to be upsetting and moving and real, and I want to commend them for speaking so maturely about those experiences, especially in this public forum. What I want to share with you today is a different perspective on why Empower Academy is so special. This is from my lens as a mother of two kids, a son who's a senior at Oak Creek High School and a daughter who's a sixth grader at Empower Academy. My daughter was two years old the first time we had a teacher point out to us that she excels in her learning. She was in preschool at Learning Edge in Oak Creek and was described on her evaluations as having high potential, advanced development, and exceptional, exceptional problem-solving abilities. Through her time at Learning Edge, we were also told that Vivian is a quiet leader, which is a phrase we weren't familiar with at the time. Quiet leaders are often introverted and soft-spoken, but they have a deep sense of purpose and a clear vision. They are thoughtful and reflective thinkers who tend to speak when they have something important to add rather than speaking for the sake of it, which I think you probably all appreciate. Quiet leaders are often tough on themselves and can tend to shut themselves um, down and um, shut down out of frustration if not given the right learning environment. They can be lost and ignored and feel overwhelmed. If given the correct environment, quiet leaders can blossom to their full potential. Vivian needs a place where le learning is collaborative and innovative about taking an um, innovative and self-paced. 
She is excited about taking an accelerated Spanish course in seventh grade through the Empower program, and that is not offered at East Middle School. Empower Academy has provided my daughter the atmosphere she needs to be successful. It offers her customized accelerated learning experience in a nurturing yet challenging environment. She is thriving there. I keep hearing how there is plenty of room to absorb the kids from Empower Academy into East and West Middle School. Absorb. That is the words that has been used. That to me is completely negative. It just sounds like bodies and chairs filling spaces with no regard to the brilliance of these kids and the need to have them reach their full potentials. If you absorb them and scatter them throughout East and West Middle Schools and pretend a Power Academy didn't exist, you are punishing them and you, are, you will break them. You are dissipating the source of the highest test scores in the middle school in this district. Please don't just absorb our kids. Please keep Empower Academy. And please don't silence my quiet leader. Thank you. Cameron. Cameron, three minutes. Thank you. <laughs> Um, ladies and, um, hi, my name is Cameron Miller, and I am a seventh grader at Empower Academy. I stand before, I stand before you not just as an individual, but as the voice of many of my peers who fear that our beloved school is at the brink of closure. I understand that tough decisions need to be made, and I listened last week as a board member expressed their concern about not wanting to hurt kids. Well, closing Empower will do just that, hurt kids. I know especially for me, uh, it would hurt my friendship, because many of my friends are going to east and I'm going to west and that will just strip me of my friends which will then make my confidence go down and my grades and blah blah blah. Um, I've been one of many lucky people to experience the personalized learning model and empower for the last two years. It's been a crucial part of my academic and personal growth. If eighth graders are not allowed to transfer into empower because of the difficulty of transitioning, it only makes sense that I, along with the other current seventh graders, shouldn't be forced to transfer out for eighth grade after thriving in this environment. The proposed, transition, the proposed transition, transition plan is nothing but a band-aid over the deep wounds that closure of the school will bring upon students, particularly my peers in 10th grade. Some board members have proudly stated during election seasons that they stand for the rights of kids with special needs. I encourage you to recognize that the students in Empower have special learning, academic, and social needs that are uniquely met by the personalized learning environment and tight-knit community made at Empower Academy. I understand that money is a problem, and I'd like to offer some alternatives. If enrollment numbers are as down as, as much as you say, can we eliminate three teachers from East or West instead of closing in power? Regarding the issue of busing costs, could we adjust the hours of power so that we could ride on the high school bus route that is already in place? Let's work together to find budget solutions that let Empower continue to thrive. Let's increase enrollment and, in turn, increase the funding that goes to Empower. Let's advertise and build increased support for the best practice personalized learning environment. We all are willing to collaborate, but please don't let our unique learning community be shattered. Empower Academy is not just a school, it's a home for many of us. Thank you for your time and consideration. Please don't close our school. Thank you. Rob Jankowski. minutes. Good evening members of the board and Mr. Thielen. Uh, my daughter I'm proud to say is the only sophomore in the Chinese for program. Um, I did send a email commentary after the last meeting unfortunately I wasn't able to speak in that although I know that you guys have been flooded with emails I just kind of wanted to recap a little bit in case we didn't get to all of them. So uh, in summary, taking a business perspective on this, I lead an operation over in Franklin. Basically, I would lead the US operations. We operate in 14 countries, two, in which, uh, two locations which are in China, 7,000 employees, one third being from China. 50% of my global meetings that occur on a monthly basis are conducted in a foreign language, including Mandarin Chinese. Chinese is the top spoken language, top three spoken languages with roughly about 16% of the population um, worldwide speaking the language. Considerable projections going forward and it is the official language of the United Nations. 
China's continued to be a threat to the United States, so why do we want to take such a valuable tool away from our children? German, no disrespect here, as I like the cars, uh, is ranked 19th, spoken by 200 million, and compared to 1.3 billion in China. So going forward, there's a focus on in manufacturing low-cost countries. German is not, German is not a low-cost country, but China is a low-cost country, and it continues to be a threat to our nation. So the question is, why are we proposing a focus on just partial or elimination of the Chinese program? As far as moving forward, what are we focused on as far as the roadmap or the vision? Are we aligned with future trends? District focus on features versus value. Are we focused on how we physically appear versus the difference we make in our children's lives? Are we focused on a swimming pool, football field? Or are we focused on what's gonna benefit our children? which is more likely to help my ch uh, child in their career path, a pool or a language benefit. Noted Chinese low enrollment, teachers must sell their program. Is that how we're deciding things going forward? Not all the teachers here are salespeople. So my child is a success program of that. So there needs to be more emphasis on value and the benefits versus the features. Going forward, switching gears, focus on a strategic enrollment plan. I get it, budget program, budget issues exist. Outside core programs, do we have a list of key programs with identified uh, value, not singling out programs like Chinese looking at all programs, a focused committee focusing on strategic enrollment, inbound initiatives that will attract students from other divisions. Thank you. Yeah. Katie? Hi, three minutes. Okay. Hi, I'm Katie Eaton, the parent of a current seventh grader enrolled in Chinese. And I just want to once again voice my concern with the proposal to eliminate the program or even to limit it to the eighth grade through high school compromise that I've been hearing about. Um, I've not seen the details of this compromise, so I definitely don't have all the details, but to offer a language starting in eighth grade, it literally doesn't make sense the way our district has languages set up because you can't start a language in eighth grade. So just so in case that's not clear, we can't get rid of it in seventh grade and keep it in eighth grade because it you'll have nobody to enter into the eighth grade year. So just want to make sure that's clear. Maybe that's my misunderstanding. <coughs> but. That confusion aside, um, I'm struggling to understand the financial benefit of removing the program as current Chinese students will have to find another language that's going to, I mean, we've talked about this, it's going <coughs> to increase the need for an FTE um, in another language, no doubt. Um, I also fear that the decision is being made based on skewed data, as we've also heard tonight, um, without recognizing that Chinese classes were not being offered during COVID. They had to completely recover and start over from ground zero, getting people in the door. Um, so I feel like that was not mentioned in the data. I think that's misleading. Um, this program is actually stronger than anyone has conveyed given that major setback. I feel like they're increasing year over year. We've heard all of the benefits, so I won't go through them all again about how Chinese is actually very, very um, future focused, you know, language and, and curriculum. I worry most about how this will impact current students, allowing them to only get so far in this language and then hurting them in the middle of their high school career by removing the program should enrollment decline. My biggest worry, if the program only continues in a limited capacity as is being talked about, is can I confidently have my seventh grader pursue Chinese without fear that it will be removed from the district when he only has one or two years under his belt? Just because, you know, it's declined and suddenly they decide they're not going to do it anymore. And now my son's in, you know, ninth, 10th grade and he doesn't have the requirements he needs for college. These are real concerns for parents of college bound students that must be taken into consideration. I ask you to please make the best decision for these students valuing academics above other non necessities that might be on the table. It truly pains me and it's been said here as well that football and swimming and other extracurricular activities are getting millions of dollars poured into them, while we can't even spare a fraction of that for future-focused world language programs like this. Thank you. Steve Buzuteri. Three minutes. 
minutes, sir. Thank you. Hi. Uh, two weeks ago, uh, first of all, Stephen Busateri, uh, 8280 South 13th Street. Uh, I spoke to you guys two weeks ago about keeping the, uh, the Chinese program. At that time, I, I walked everybody through that. I'm an executive at a Fortune 25 company. And much of what's been talked about uh, tonight, I, I won't repeat. Um, so I, I did want to make some extra points about keeping this program. As an executive, I have to wear many hats, right? Uh, first and foremost, uh, the balancing the budget hat. It's, it's an important job. You guys have to do it. It's, it's, digit, it's uh, Im important to be diligent about that job. But when it comes to becoming globally competitive and being uh, a differentiator, that I think about root cause. I, too, am an engineer, like was uh, talked about earlier. And the thing about root cause is most important. Uh, we, we understand that the problem that we're at in the district is because of enrollment. And we know if enrollment goes up, then we have more students that are coming into the district, therefore more funds that go to you guys. Okay. So it only makes sense that sometimes you have to put on your marketing hat. And I don't mean Chinese teachers figuring out how to market their program. What I do mean is that as a business, that when you're trying to attract high quality talent and you're trying to keep and retain it, and you're also trying to attract students to your district, that you need to have differentiators. If you don't have differentiators, then you tend to stagnate. You tend to look like everybody else does. Chinese, the program that we have, allows us to be a competitive differentiator among many districts in, in the state of Wisconsin. And so if, it, as uh, Wisconsin uh, goes forward as, vo as voucher, voter, excuse me, voucher programs, that we want to engage people to come to our district with the differentiators that we have. We want to make sure that they come through and, and shine through with the quality of education. And as a longtime resident of, of Oak Creek, I'm not here to just be better than Franklin. I'm here to have a competitive vision about the kind of education that we have that is forward thinking and is, puts us in a mindset to be competitive in a global economy. That's the kind of things that we want to have in our district. And I implore you guys, keep this program, keep the other programs that were talked about tonight. Let's figure out what the things we need to do about grants and funding, giving this more time in order to be able to do a high quality job of being differentiators on the map as Oak Creek. Thank you very much. Apologize, Alina, is that my saying that correct? Correct? Adelina? Adelina? Sorry? Both okay, apologize. Christy? <laughs> Christy, three minutes. You. Good mm -hmm. evening, uh, board members, Superintendent Thielen, and parents. Uh, I'm the mother of Adelina Tao, who spoke before about our docent. I'm here to provide my input regarding the Chinese language course. In the interest of brevity, I will simply state that I support the Chinese language course for all the reasons the parents and students have already shared with you. I'm not here to convince you one way or the other, because that is the job of the data. However, as the adage goes, garbage in, garbage out. If the data is comprehensive and has integrity, then by all means, let the data guide you. However, as you sit here tonight, can you honestly say that you have all the data and information you need to make that impactful and profound decision that will forever affect our children and our district? Was there information and data shared with you as to how many courses are still being offered even though they don't meet the quota requirement. Which criteria were considered in deciding to put Chinese on the chopping block and not some other language course or other courses? I will submit to you that my review of available data does not support the explanation that enrollment is the primary or the sole criteria for putting the Chinese language course on the chopping block. Over the years, there have been increasing criticism of the American education system and the competitiveness of our children at the global level. How is your decision going to help or hurt our children? I submit to you, 
that a vote to eliminate or sunset the Chinese language course can only hurt our school district and our children. The only temporary gain is the financial savings, which was not provided in the, in the initial proposal that was made public. I say this is a temporary financial savings because whatever is saved today will surely be used tomorrow. I implore you, do not trade our students' success or chances of success so that you can temporarily balance the books. Every parent's hope is to enable their child to be successful, and in today's time, success is so much more than what we find in our backyard, as you've already heard through the testimonies of parents. We have to prepare our children to truly believe that the world is their oyster, and the best way to do that is to offer them avenues to do so, one of which is a foreign language, such as the Chinese language, which parents have already, uh, in their testimony, have already stated that the Chinese language is has carry and carries indisputable economic value. Therefore, I ask you once again to take care and consideration. And if you're not ready to vote, please don't vote. Give us the time and afford us the opportunity to figure something out. Thank you. Uh, Julie? Three minutes, Julie. Thank you. Thank you. Hello, my name is Julie Shadow. I am a parent of a junior who will be taking AP Chinese next year. She's uh, taken Chinese since she was in grade school, and then a seventh grader who started in grade school and who is currently taking Chinese as well. A couple of concerns, and I know they've been mentioned, so we'll just quickly go through them. Data is about what story you want to tell. What we heard is a one-sided view of these are the enrollment numbers, this is the, the cost. What we didn't hear is what's the per student cost, the objectivity across the full analysis of what was done to look at other programs. You had asked the question, Mr. Gniglia, of the gentleman that was up here. He asked you, what, what should I do with low enrollment numbers? And you asked him, well, what, which, what, what are other classes? He couldn't answer that. So I hope that you have looked at a comprehensive plan of what the revenue is, as well as what the potential out is. One of the things to remember is if we think of this as a savings, this is a shell game of FTE out reallocation. Because if you're gonna not offer Chinese, that money ends up being shifted, if you will, to either Chinese or uh, Spanish or German. So think about what is the actual cost savings of that proposal. Next. As it relates to the proposal to sunset it in sixth and seventh grade and only offer it in eighth grade, sixth and seventh grade, <clears throat> students are really exploring the languages. What are the opportunities that they have? What are things that they have no idea about? Um, when they get to high school and by the time they're in eighth grade, <coughs> that's when you're starting to make serious decisions about what do you want your college resume to be? What do you want your high school resume to be? What are the things that I want to do when I grow up? By not allowing Chinese to be offered, I don't know that that's going to be one of the things that they'll be thinking about, right? Because they would have already moved on to German or uh, Spanish. Third, jobs. And I shared with you last time I worked for a Fortune 100 company in downtown Milwaukee. We, and I know, and we've heard, there's industries and jobs that are high paying jobs and high revenue industries that ultimately benefit the community. So when we think about the, it's a very myopic view to look at, well, this is what we're gonna save for this. Really what we should be looking at is this broadly. What's the revenue that we get from these people who have these types of jobs? What's the uh, revenue that we're getting from the taxes that these people are buying homes for? Why are the, why, what is the differentiator? So I ask you, what is the story that we wanna tell about Oak Creek schools? Thank you. John. Three minutes, John. Thank you. Hi, uh, good evening, uh, John Turley. Um, I spoke with you all about two weeks ago, and I'll, I'll start the same way. I'm here because my daughter asked me to come. Um, 
she, her Chinese is her, her favorite class. It's something she comes home, she talks about it, uh, she shares it with, with me, my wife, her sister. Um, whenever you have a child who's excited about any sort of coursework whatsoever, um, it's, it's worth protecting, so that, that's why I'm here. Um, we've heard from a lot of different people, both two weeks ago, tonight, there are a lot of important reasons why we're trying to protect this program. I, I'm not gonna rehash all of them. Um, other to say, I just wanna thank especially the, the kids who came forth to talk about the importance of, of, of having this program. Um, my concern and, and the reason I'm troubled with making a decision, um, I, I, I think is twofold. Um, one, I'm concerned about the, the data. I think everyone is. Um, it seems questionable, it doesn't seem reliable. I don't think anyone here would suggest that COVID was a period of time that's representative and can be used. Um, I'm more concerned because I don't think you really care about the data. It's not important, it's not good data, and we know that. This is a budgetary issue. And I'm concerned that the Chinese program is being targeted because it's the easy fix. It's the one we can get it done quickly. It saves money for Blue AstroTurf or what have you. And that's my biggest concern. Um, and I feel like even if it may solve a very quick, simple problem, it has long-term consequences for, for all the reasons that, that everyone's shared. Um, <clears throat> I think my, I, the final point I, I would make is, is this. Um, this didn't come on my radar until two weeks ago. Um, my daughter told me, go save Chinese, so that's why I'm here. Uh, I am found that you have a very dedicated, very invested group of parents that are here to help, very good teachers that want to save this program and are going to, willing to do whatever, and we're here to help. I don't know if we've had all the time, but even in that week that we had, I was impressed by the parents that were able to find the resources to identify 20 different foundations that have as part of their mission statement the ability to support Chinese language programs and other language programs, and I don't know if we've explored those. Um, they're here to help, we're here to help, and I think that we should look to some of these parents to see if they can help find solutions. And if we have that time, and that's what I would recommend, is stay with the status quo, give us and the parents some opportunities to look into other possibilities and solutions of getting the funds we need. And I think if we're able to do that, um, we might be able to save this program again the long-term interest for this uh, school district. Thank you very much. So we're gonna reconvene a former portion of the meeting for board discussion and or action. Um, we're gonna go to action items. Mark, you had a question? Uh, yes, I'd like to know if we could just take a five minute break to give everybody a chance to I'll settle in and recoup for the rest of the meeting. How about a two minute break? Two minute break's fine with me. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed say nay.
Apologize, waiting for one board member. <laughs> Won't see where he's at. All rise. <laughs> Thank you for your patience. Um, right to the action item, middle school and high school world language Chinese proposal. I would like to start the proposal. Um, everybody that knows me up here, I'm a cook, so it's, it's a pot, and I'm going to throw a bunch of stuff in here, and it's open for discussion. Just let me start. Please be patient. I'd like to make a proposal, a motion to continue Chinese language in the high school. However, Chinese 4 and AP, this is back to the district, based on their enrollment numbers I'm looking at, we might have to just maybe, I'm not saying combine them, but you guys got to think about stacking or figure that out, but to increase that enrollment, but that's a that's a district issue. Is a to me as a board, I love it. So continue going it. But I'm just looking at the numbers. Okay, I'm just it's amazed on how well these kids are doing. So that's real clear on the high school. When it comes to the middle school, I like to give the sixth and seventh grade a year one year opportunity to work with the district on obtaining grants. That a wonderful student named Jacob has shown me. That, the, that is available to continue our sixth and seventh grade Chinese. They can use wise grants and, and they can find out finding solutions, utilize foundations. There's a lot of money out there that you guys can use. And the amount of energy that these Chinese, I got personal text messages, I, probably a thousand, right? And a bunch of emails that every board member up here has. And all the energy that you guys put in that, and please develop committees because you got wonderful parents that are here to help. Help them come and create and figure out the money that, to continue this middle school. But on March 1st, 2025, I want the, you guys to come back to the board to have a further discussion on this middle school. And if the funding is available, and for the board, and for you this year, to make up that deficit, I'd rather take that $90,000 from this interest that we made from our investments to cover this one year for 2024-25 for the middle school to continue moving forward. It gives you guys one more year to continue figuring this out and work as a group, create communities, figure out what we can do because there's a lot of grants. I seen it, this young little gentleman named Jacob showed me, wonderful student. I wish he was here, I'd give him a hug right now. He is here. But are you, is he here? He's I don't want to say his last name, but. He's, he's in the back. Yep. Frank, he's back here. He's here yeah. earlier, yeah. Frank. Um, But I would like to pause on that. I don't want to eliminate it, but that's, that's my motion. I hope it makes sense. But I also think that in that motion, we also got to look at the, um, the class size is going from 18 down to 12. So that, because it, there's many other classes, and this message is also for German. This is not just for Chinese. And so look at the opportunities, but that's, what, that's my motion to continue high school moving forward and the middle school to give them one more year of opportunity to to work on it, to figure out funding. The money's not that big and, and the amount of money on the budget and we have to figure out as a district to keep it going because the world that I work in, and I have two primary jobs, my first primary job and the lady that spoke, Chinese is China and all the stuff that we have and we're wearing them today is all part of China. I hate to tell you, but it's the truth. And whatever continues moving the stock market obviously is the world that I live in and so I'm for keeping it. I'll second that proposal. That motion. Six seconds. Any discussion? Hey, yeah, one other thing. Um, from a marketing standpoint, you know, we've got a really good marketing program in the high school in mm -hmm. terms of in business. I would implore to Chinese teachers that this could yep. possibly be a project for our marketing kids, you know, in terms of how do we develop better, you know, attendance in terms of enrollment and things like that. So reach out to your colleagues. But the, district's, out. Yeah. but the district's got to support it. Yeah. It's got to help. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Was, I know Wisconsin, I did some research myself, and Wisconsin actually, and this surprised me, um, Wisconsin is the highest in the United States with language offerings. Um, that really surprised me. I, didn't, I thought it would be New York or California or something like that, but Wisconsin is the largest with offering language offerings. Um, 
language does have value, and so do other non-core classes. And I think that's part of the part of the issue is we have so many wonderful things. Do I want to cut any of them? No. They're all good, but they're all competing for the same number of students. And that's OK. I'm OK with competition. Um, but I think then it's important that every, every non-core class have the same ability to compete for those students. It shouldn't be just, for example, career and technology versus you know family and consumer living or something like that. They all have to be working together. And that's why I I'll also agree, I don't think it's um, fair to put that all on the teacher's shoulders, whatever it is, whatever class it is. Teachers have enough on their plate right now. Um, we have to find a different way to do that. Um, I, I also know that we have to balance our budget. And we have taken great pride in this district to um, choose to balance our budget. Some districts don't. Some districts go out and do operational referendums. That's not sound business practice. Um, so it's, it is very, very tough. We, we cry all the time to our legislators about the amount of funding that we get or the lack of funding that we get. We, in revenue aid per pupil, Oak Creek gets $11,000. That's a lot less than other districts around us. That doesn't even keep up with the rate of inflation. If we got the rate of inflation, I think it's $75, $75 per student for the rate of inflation, that would amount to $457,000. That would have allowed us to keep both of these programs that we're talking about. So it's write your legislators. Please contact them. Um, they're, they're, they're on the cusp. They're listening finally to us. So it's going to take more people than just us up here on the board contacting them. It's going to take every one of you to say, we need to have fair funding. So I'll get off my screen. Okay. I guess one other question I have is, um, I, I, you know, Blaze, does this, what Frank is suggesting, does this work? Would this work? Well, I, I, so I wanted to get two, two points of clarification. So we're going to uh, increase the interest budget for one year in order to accommodate the one position, keep the other position, essentially both, keep it as is for a year. When do you want to see the fundraising to approximately 95,000 take place? Would that take place next year? That would then be used for the following year? So March 1st, it comes back to the board, just the middle school, and figuring out if we – because here's my question. Mark brought up about in May – tell me if I'm wrong, Mark – mid-May, uh, the annual budget is brought up for the school district, the big annual budget, correct? No. My annual budget. Well, in, uh, in fall, we get the new state biannual yeah. budget numbers. So we're kind of in flux at the Correct me if no, I'm wrong, but um, we're not in flux. We know where we, we yep. know where we sit for the balance of this school year, but we won't know what we're going to get out of the state for additional funds if there are any until the biannual, biannual budget is passed in November. Correct? Correct? No, that actually. So we're in the second year of a biennium, so right. next year is completely known. And the makeup between tax levy and state equalization aid. That part's in flux, but it doesn't matter because overall the same dollar amount will be available. Right. The following year, though, is going to be critical because basically next spring is going to be the beginning of the negotiations in Madison about the new biennium. Right. So that's when you're talking about 25, 26. Right. Uh, that year will be impacted okay. significantly. All right. So, so zero. Another, yeah, zero off. All yep. right. Yep. But just to make sure I have this, so we're talking about. Um, Fundraising for with multiple areas to get funding in the amount of about ninety five thousand to take place next year to pay well, for the year, following year. So this year, taking the interest from the money that we yep. have the investments, we'll cover that. Next year. For this year. Got it. For twenty four twenty five. Okay. For twenty five twenty six, I want to give them a one year option. But ours district, help the committee, whatever the whatever it is, to figure out if we can get additional grants to cover that. Does that make sense? Okay. So, okay. So for twenty five, twenty six, you're talking about that's where we need to see the grant revenue in order to well, offset. Yeah, I want okay. opportunities to grow. But right now, let's take it out a little bit of uh, this pot and put it in a big pot. That makes sense. Yeah, there, the interest budget is Because <laughs> I looked robust. at the numbers and figured out the budget. I know there's enough money to cover it, and I, I'm totally for it, keeping it. Okay. Do you have a deadline for the grants being lined up for twenty five, twenty six? So next year at this time when we come here, 
the grants aren't lined up, then? I say by March of 1st of next year, because okay. I want to give the parents, and, I, and obviously enough, to, but I feel confident that this will continue moving forward. The only thing I have, I, I guess my concern, or I guess those people who are going to go out and look at for grants, really push for ones that are um, renewable, right. um, automatically renewable, because 100%. that's the problem with grants yep. and things of that nature. Time. They can be one year, yep. I mean, like ESSER yep. funds that we got, they were one-time use, which is why we as a district chose to use those things for one-time items and not put it into staffing. But here's my point. Our but no, I totally agree with you, Cheryl, one hundred percent. My thing is that we don't even know what our budget is next year. So all of a sudden, if we get a if our enrollment's higher, right, and we have a surplus, and this is a, not as you, and we just continue moving forward. So, but it, it's something that I just I, I totally think it's believe in. While looking so, into, yep. So, just one more comment, I guess. Yeah. Too. Yep. I hope everybody realizes that you know when we have input from the public like this, we do listen. And we're trying to do everything we can to make it work. So, you know, if things don't happen right away like you think they should, sometimes it takes time to put the numbers together, but we're trying, we're trying our darndest to get it done. Right. And, our, and I want to, I mean, our administration, I mean, I, I, they really do a good job. I've been doing this a long time on the school board, and they are doing a really good job of giving us the facts and giving us information that we ask for. Mm -hmm. And I've got a slew of e emails that I've sent to them and they've all responded to me with accurate information. So um, I just want that said. Any other questions? Can all we right. clarify the motion? That's a, that's a good one. <laughs> well, <laughs> really? I just told you. <laughs> Oh, God. It's three pages long. Page. I know. I don't know how to. <laughs> I can't shorten this. I don't know what the. Okay. Like a motion to continue Chinese language at the high school. Or. Ever. <laughs> <laughs> just, just leave it general. Yep. Just continue and to continue with. sixth and seventh grade Chinese. For the 24, 25, 24 25 year. year. Utilizing interest from our investments to pay for, cover that. And in future endowment or, or funding, we will think outside the box to get it done. Kabish? Sorry, that was. Get all that, Jill. <laughs> we should offer Italian. <laughs> you can make a motion. Yeah, well, I, I second. That was the easy part. Oh, you second. did? All right. Okay. Okay, roll call. Kelly? Yes. Darren? Yes. Mike? Yes. Cheryl? Yes. Jerry? Yes. Mark? Yes. Frank a yes. So passed. <laughs> Approval of the board meeting schedule for 24-25 school year. I need a motion. Senegalia moves to approve. First Real seconds. seconds. Boy, we should have. Yeah, that was in concert. All right. <laughs> Any discussion? Yeah. Um, again, just want to make sure that we have the ability to uh, live stream from the Performing Arts Center on 826. I know that's been an issue in the past. Correct. Right. We've talked to Chris Bennett. Excellent. Thank you. All in favor say aye. 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 Paul say nay. Approve of the middle school ELA resource recommendation. Certainly moves to approve. That's like seconds. Any discussion? Yeah, I, um, I took the time, and John Krennic was uh, gracious enough to give me the actual books. So we did some review, and I know Kelly looked at them too, and we thought it was good. Yeah, we thought it was good. Yeah, they're really great. Yeah. Okay. Any other questions? Nope. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed say nay. Approval of the capital improvement projects, 24-25, with the 10-year capital uh, improvement plan. There Any were more? two motions there. Did we need to separate them for on the last one? For the middle school? Oh, yeah. PLA resource. That's my bag. Oh, oh yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. For Chinese? Oh, yeah. yeah. Okay. No, no, for middle school, right? For the yeah. ELA? Yep. Um, second motion is um, that I... Senegal moves to approve the <coughs> Savas professional development training. That's like seconds. Any motions on that? Excuse me, any discussion? 
in favor say aye. 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 Opposed say nay. Thank you, Joe. Um, all right. Back to the approval of capital improvement project for 24-25. Mr. Niglia moves to approve. Crystal second. Any discussion? Um, I had just asked um, Blaze about the chip replacement um, at the two schools, uh, Forest Ridge and uh, Ed Edgewood, and those will be done this summer. I know some people have been concerned about that. Um, so I just wanted that made aware to people. Question on the fiber phase. Hmm? Have we started looking at uh, generating revenue off the, off the fiber? Yeah, he's yep. brought that up last so, right. Yeah, right now, actually, Chris Bennon had a conversation last week with the city. Okay. Uh, so it's, it's still just the city, though? At this point, yeah. Okay. Need to get a little bit more aggressive with that. There is a second motion that we need to, um, um, I'm, Sir Niglia moves to approve the 10 year CIP plan as presented. Well, we didn't do the we first one. Oh, approved. sorry. All right, first one, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed say nay. Okay, now, Go Sir ahead. Niglia moves to approve the 10 year CIP plan as presented. And Chris will second. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed say nay. Information item, um, Future Empowerment Academy. So yeah, I'd like to bring up Sue Thompson and Gina Martinelli. Uh, one of the things that was discussed at the last meeting was a uh, take a look at a transition plan if Empower was sunsetted, what that would look like in terms of support from the schools. So they're here to give a presentation along with Megan Ahrens. Good evening. Um, we wanted to come and talk about how we can support empower students if they need to transition to East and West Middle Schools. So Sue is with me and also Gina Martinelli is the new principal of West. Um, so starting in April and May, whenever a decision is made on empower, we plan to schedule empower students together in houses or powerhouses to ensure that they have that connection with their friends and colleagues as much as possible because we know that it's going to be a tough transition so we want to provide them um, the friends in their houses and in their classes as much as we can. Uh, also we have a great people services team our school counselors will help to facilitate transition meetings with new students they already support empower so they can make those connections um, and help the students as they start to think about how they'll transition and any further supports that they will need um, and set up one-on-one -on -one meetings with the counselors as needed and parents can reach out to our people services team as well. In May, we offer a transition night. So we would tailor that this year to help um, not only new incoming sixth graders to transition to East and West, but also invite all Empower families and then work with our seventh and eighth grade staff to also be there that evening to meet all of the families, give tours, and um, we have student ambassadors that we can help couple um, and partner students with to help um, transition and make those connections this spring because um, we know it will be a tough transition for them. In August, we both offer locker, locker move-in days where um, you can come in, see the building, get acclimated with the staff, the school, and move all of your belongings into the lockers um, and meet us. That's kind of like the initial get ready for school and welcome back. Then we also offer open house. We offer a bunch of different um, meetings and programming during open house so we can tailor meetings as well. Sue and I talked about hosting um, the parents of Empower and students to answer any questions about just like the logistics of middle school and the differences um, that they'll be entering in and um, needing to get to know us. And then just kind of ongoing um, in September, we can continue those relationships with our counselor that we're gonna start in the spring and again have more in-depth meetings with students um, provide groups um, different say groups lunch bunch opportunities and whatever sort of transition um, resources we need we do the DESA testing to see what students need for social emotional support um, but if we are aware of any students struggling or who have greater needs we can 
create to the groups that we need to support them, depending on the needs that we're seeing come out. Um, and then just ongoing support as needed. Um, you know, we, we know it will be tough to transition, but we wanted to just share with you some of our initial ideas and then support it any way that parents and students bring up to us to help. And then the Empower team also has offered to help with that transition as well as they know uh, their students um, if it were to sunset. So they would be uh, more than happy to help out as well. Um, my question would be, and it was brought up here tonight as well, um, changes in curriculum where, you know, differences in curriculum where mm -hmm. students may be at certain levels might be different than what their peers are at the middle schools. Um, is there a plan or will there be a plan to uh, handle that? Yeah, we'll have to work with John and the learning team to see where all of the students are entering okay. to us. We do have all the same curriculum and curriculum resources. Um, they're adopted East, West, and Empower. So it won't be brand new curriculum. We'll just have to figure out, you know, based on data and, and teacher recommendation from Empower, what's going to be the best placement in the classes for the students and how we can best support them. And obviously, as a public mi middle school, we differentiate for a wide variety of abilities and students in our classes. And we have adopted recently different intervention and enrichment programs um, to help students in our RTI process. Um, so we will, you know, we will support them the best that we can and get them um, into the classes that they need to. Thank you. Anybody else? Questions? Thank you. Uh, Judge, a January budget report. All right. So we are uh, through, actually we're balanced for February, we're a little bit behind here, but January, um, our revenue numbers are, are coming in where we expected them to. Um, you can see it's kind of at the top, if you do compare to previous years, our local tax levy dependence has gone up uh, in the general fund. That's why you kind of see last year we're at about 56% between all the revenue limit items compared to this year we're at 51. A lot of that is due to taxes don't come, they don't even start coming in until January. Uh, whereas state aid, if you have a heavier dependence on state aid, you start getting that funding in September, then you get it again in December, and so it's a little more spaced out. So um, on, the, the one, uh, speaking to the previous item we talked about, uh, the Chinese looking at interest, our interest budget right now, we're at 144%, I believe 5.39 was the interest earnings rate for January. Uh, so that's a very strong rate. So um, just to recap, what we're basically gonna do is make that budget next year, not 400,000, but 495,000. Um, we should hit it uh, depending on what interest does, right? So if, if we stay in that five point range, or even if it drops to probably four and a half, we're probably still fine. Um, it's just a matter of, you know, we've been through those dark times of a decade of 0 0.3, 0 0.5, where interest earnings were really rare. Um, so we're in good times right now with interest earnings. Outside of that, um, on the expense side, I did add, just because I was getting frustrated with because uh, I like comparing one year to the next uh, as far as going in the past. And you kind of see you're at 45.49% of the budget expended last year. Or I'm sorry, 43 when you look at Fund 10 and Fund 27 right here. And this year we're at 46%. And I feel like a broke rec broken record because every board meeting I, I, that we have these, we I talk about we do the CIP transfer in August. We're going to do that every August so that it'll work its way out over the next uh, couple of years as long as we stick to that, you know, because it can vary. Um, so what I did was I added a line just to, because obviously salaries and benefits are the biggest driver in a school district budget. So what I did was I combined those uh, for all the fiscal years so you could kind of get a pulse on where we are year to date compared to previous years. And last year we were at 46.25, year before that 45.97, and this year we're at 46.06. So we're in the ballpark going expended right as planned with our salary and benefits. Again, the biggest line item uh, in a school district budget. And and you'll also notice, uh, Frank, you might notice more, uh, supplies in Fund 27 have a budget there. <laughs> so supplies in Fund 27, that's our special ed fund, 
uh, all supplies in special ed are not eligible for state aid for equalization aid, or I'm sorry, for uh, special ed aid. So what we do is we try to maximize our grant revenues for special ed and use those for supplies. And that way we can put staffing in an account that can be aidable uh, by the state for categorical aid. So it's just maximizing our revenue potential in the following year. And our fund balance, uh, this is where we're at uh, as of the end of January, down from the previous January, a lot of that was investments in fiber um, and things that we did that was a little bit one time in, in nature. Um, we are seeing, I think I got the first 400 some thousand roll in this month for the first reimbursement of E-rate for the first phase of the fiber project. So second phase, as you saw in the memo, should be done this fall, and then we'll probably get the reimbursement for that, I would guess, next spring. So that I'm planning on just having drop into fund balance and replenish what was used in order to fund the project to begin with. Can we relook a uh, relook at uh, fund or number uh, item 280 again? So when you look at 577309, is that how much we made already, correct? Yes, that's correct. So mine was saying take the 95 off of that. Oh, so use fund balance? Well, or take the interest that we made so well, you, far. Right, well, you would for essentially, this year. yeah, you, you can't, year. right, you can't budget next year with right. this year's money. But what we could do is okay. just have an uh, unbalanced budget by 95,000. I got it. The and other then, option and is. we recoup, recoup through interest. Right. right. Yep. Okay. All right. Yeah. It might I didn't be, know if I was saying the right word. No, no. You, you, so, I, no. I think it would probably be cleaner to have it at 495. Got it. Because, I mean, you get to the same place, but you'd have a balanced budget. And I don't care what bucket we take out of it. <laughs> if it's that or something, if it's just like something to get it, to get it through for this year, yep. right? And then we'll figure yeah. out what the budget is. You guys agree? Nobody's talking. Yes. Well, they yeah. approved yes. it already. <laughs> Sounds plausible. <laughs> I'll just here I just want to make sure. Huh? <laughs> All right. All right, I'll come upcoming agendas. All right, March 18th. Action items will be the debt defeasance authorization, information items. We'll have a spotlight with the Oak Creek High School supervisory aid recognition, uh, as well as an update on self-funding of health insurance, February budget report. Uh, we will have a program spotlight. We'll have our Forest Ridge Ambassadors program. I know we always enjoy uh, those uh, spotlights that come from our schools. Review a fee schedule for the 24-25 school year. Uh, action items for the April 8th meeting. Approval of the fee schedule for the 24-25 school year. The Connects 66.0301 agreement approval and change to the Oak Creek Franklin becoming fiscal agent. And the action item for the Future Empower of uh, the Future of Empower Academy will also be on April 8th. Information items, uh, the WASB convention update, ACP annual update, health and wellness center.